Good morning guys and welcome back to another vlog. Wednesday, January 12th, and we've got lots of things to do. I have about a million YouTube videos that I need to edit. Love that for us. But also today I'm hopping on a call with Kristen from Adelinda Fashion, which is the company that I've worked with to do the like Joshua Tree collection and New York Fashion Week and all. And we are hopefully gonna figure out what is up with New York Fashion Week in February because we were originally gonna do it, but with the new variant, everything's been kind of just like not so great. So hopefully we're gonna figure out whether or not that is happening because I obviously would need to start working on a collection ASAP if it's happening. And if it is happening, then I wanna make that collection in like a separate video format and kind of do what I did last time and make a little mini series. But if it's not, then I'm just gonna make my collection normally in these vlogs. So that's kind of why I've been hesitant on starting the next collection because I just don't know which format of video I'm gonna be presenting it in. So hopefully we'll get some answers on that later today. But other than that, I do wanna start working with some of the scraps that I have and just making some little pieces with what I do have already that aren't necessarily part of the next collection in a sense but just like you know extra one-off pieces and stuff like that so that is what we are hopefully going to be working on today so one of my most commonly asked questions is always like how am i zero waste what products do i make to be zero waste and all that stuff and honestly i feel like i was so much better about it when i first started my brand because i didn't have that many scraps and things or just as many things going on so i was able to experiment a lot more and like make new products and do stuff like that but lately i've just been so busy that i haven't had the time to even like sit down and think of new products or anything but one of my go-to products is obviously doing any sort of like zero waste scrap stuffing kind of deal so i've done that in various different ways usually just with accessories so i've done like clutches with vinyl and i've done clutches with chiffon as well and i think these are super fun bags it's a really great way to get rid of all the really really tiny scraps and also like makes for a really cool texture and kind of has that puffer look especially with the chiffon that is honestly like really trendy so it kind of works out in that way it's like a win-win for all of us so today that's kind of what i want to work on i want to make just as many as i can because my scraps have been piling up like no other and I just need to start getting rid of some like I have some other ideas of what I can do with some of them but I just need to start getting rid of them because all of my bins downstairs in my garage studio like they are full they're all color-coded it's all super organized but they're all full so I need to start getting rid of them so that's what we're gonna do I just got a shipment yesterday from Vivify Textiles they're sustainable fabric suppliers so if you guys ever want to get your own sustainable fabrics you can get them from them they're super great and easy to work with they can make any custom color you want you just have to send them like the pantone color of it they have some beautiful like recycled polyester satin and then chiffons and just like really great fabrics that are obviously sustainable i also really like them because they show where their fabrics are made and they literally have a little map where you can like click on it and see what the factory looks like and obviously all of their workers are paid living wages and it is just good so i appreciate that transparency so so much anyway i'm excited because i got some chiffon from them so that i could make more little clutches and stuff so i I was gonna get like just normal chiffon but they have this really beautiful crinkle chiffon which I thought would add like a nice little extra texture to the bags so I think I'm just gonna make like honestly neutral tone bags I might make some with like pink under it since Valentine's Day is coming up maybe it'll be like I don't know cute little thing that way but I'm gonna show you guys up close and see if you can really see the texture so here's a more up close view as you can see it has like that really nice crinkle texture that I really really love it is so beautiful it has such a beautiful drape to it so this is what we're gonna be using Using. I did also get I believe satin from them as well so we'll open that up but today we're just gonna be working with the crinkle chiffon so I got some custom black satin from them and I'm very excited for this I've got I've got ideas I've got things in mind that I want to test out possible new products so I'm very excited about that I love the fact that you can find the fabric on their website and if it's not the color you want like you can ask them for a different color I believe they kind of show them all mostly in white so it's cool to just be like hey can I have this this nice like recycled polyester satin but like in black and then they're like yeah and then here we are so this will be used later on in a different video probably but today we're doing zero waste stuff so crinkle chiffon it is so you can honestly use this concept 
concept for so many things and i've gotten asked to do tutorials of things so often but it's like you can literally just kind of make it up and do it in your own way like it's not like i invented this technique it's not like some crazy concept you basically just make like a little pouch with your fabric stuff it and then like top stitch all over it so you can get super creative with it whether it's like how you top stitch if you want to do like you know specific type of top stitching where it's like more symmetrical and more like you know planned out or if you're going all crazy with it if it's more curvy if it's more like pointed there's just so many different things you can do with it so i think that's the fun of it and that's how you can kind of make it your own but i have a just very generic circle pattern that i like to cut out for these to make the circle bags i don't know if i said that's what we're doing but that's what we're doing so i need four circles for each bag because then you put two and two together to make both sides of it and that's kind of how it works so i'm going to just cut out literally as many as i can and see how many bags i'm able to make and then obviously i'm going to need to buy enough like chains or straps or whatever and also the little metal clasp i think i have a good amount but i don't know how many i have so i just want to see how many i can literally make and i'm going to try to make as many as i possibly can because it's not often that i come across chiffon for my brand i used to honestly just get like remnants at joann's of chiffon whenever i could find them but i have not been really shopping remnants at all in a very long time just because i already have so many fabric straps there's no need for me to go buy more so i was excited to get this one because it's another sustainable way of getting chiffon without having to go through joann's remnant section and obviously this way i can make more of them too excited about that let's get cutting make 12 bags which is a lot so I'm excited about that I'm a little indecisive of how I want to go about what colors to make I definitely want to make some white and neutrals because I know those always sell well because you know they kind of go with everything but I think I do want to add maybe like a little pink in there and stuff and I'm gonna see what a green would look like under it obviously it's gonna like tone it down but I think a green would be really fun just for spring so I'm gonna bring you guys down to my garage and show you guys kind of all the scraps I have how I had them organized and then we'll bring some of those up to you know start getting this figured out so welcome to my garage this is my extra set of bins that literally just have scraps in them so they're all color coded generally so i'll show you guys kind of one by one what it kind of looks like but it's all my cutting scraps all of my like serger scraps threads all the things i've literally not thrown a single thing away and you will literally see what i mean so for example here are all of my red scraps so anything that has red burgundies all of just those general tones are in here and here i have a bunch of green scraps again a bunch of different shades and tones but all green and here i have a bunch of black scraps this one's like overflowing definitely need to be using these soon here we have blue scraps these are muslin scraps white scraps black and white scraps and gray these are purpley scraps this is just christmas scraps that i'm gonna i don't know do something with eventually these are yellow and orangey scraps pink scraps and all the creamy colored tan brown scraps. So I think for sure we're gonna start with the white scraps just because I do wanna make some all white bags. I think those are fun and cute and good for spring and also match kind of everything. So I'm gonna start with those and then maybe some cream colored ones, some pink, some green, we'll see. But we're gonna start with white and work our way from there. Okay, so the next step is to add the little like closure thingies, the little clasps, these metal magnet thingies. So the way that I do it might might not be a super traditional way of doing it. I'm not a purse maker by any means. Essentially, you kind of need to like put a bunch of backing on this so that it doesn't like rip through the chiffon when you're, you know, pulling it apart and like opening and closing the clutch. So I use all of my scraps and just create like a really thick layer behind these little clasps when I put them in there. And that kind of helps it stay in place, not rip through it or whatever without having to necessarily use interfacing or anything because there's really no need to when I have all these random scraps that then end up blending into the rest of the purse anyway. So that's kind of what I do. I honestly never really measure this out too well, but I usually just like try to figure out what a good spot would be somewhere near the top. But like, you know, keeping in mind that there is going to be seam allowance. I do want a little bit of puff at the top and then have the clasp. So that's kind of what we're working with. I'm going to go ahead and put all these on there. I do actually think I have enough surprisingly. So maybe we'll actually be able to get all of these done. I know I definitely don't have enough chain, so I am going to need to order some. But yeah, let's go ahead and get these clasps on there. 
All right, so I'm like a third of the way through, but I have my call here soon, so I'm gonna stop real quick, have the call, and then we'll probably have lunch, and then we'll get back to this. So, I'll catch you guys in a little bit. So the call went well, we still don't have an answer, but we will have an answer by Friday, is what I've been told. So fingers crossed we get to go to New York. If not, we still have a collection to make, so we will get it done, but I just really would love to go back to New York. Anyway, I have no clue what I'm gonna eat today because I'm just like not in the mood, you know what I mean? Like I'm hungry, but I'm not in the mood to like make anything, but I don't really have like anything made either, so I have to make something. So that's unfortunate. Or I could just make myself some quesadillas and call it a day. That might be the move because that is quick and effortless and I don't have to think about it too much and it fills me up. So we'll do that. Let's do this thing. putting on our little magnet clasps onto all of these. <sighs> I didn't realize how much work it is to make like 12 of these at a time because I honestly have only ever made like three or four at a time. So kind of a lot, but I really want to get at least ahead on these. Obviously I don't think I'm going to finish them all or anything, but I do want to start just getting things done and ready for the next launch, which is still TBD because it's still going to be centered around New York Fashion Week. So by the end of the week, I'll have an answer, but for now it's just TBD. So I feel like this is the most I can do to like prep for that. So let's keep going. So I had enough for 10 of these, so I got 10 of them all prepped and ready to go. So now the next step is to start actually sewing them. So I sew all the way around them, like obviously two at a time, and I leave a little spot open at the like side of it. So that's where like I'll stuff it. But I like to do kind of like a little like French seam in a way so like I do like a whole seam and then I flip it inside out and then do another seam around that because that way I can then use those French seams to put them together because otherwise trying to put two like puffy seams together is very very difficult so that way it's like flat and I'm able to piece them together. I don't know if that makes sense. It'll make sense once I like start doing it, but that is kind of the process. I'm honestly like so tired from just like standing and bending over. So I might take like a 10 minute break, just like a lay down and give my back like a break before I just go into sewing. We'll start getting through that and then we'll see where the day takes us. But if we have enough time, we'll start stuffing. If we don't, we don't, but I think we'll probably get to it. I just like am tired and looking at all this makes me want to cry a little bit. So I'm going to take a break and I will be right back. Okay, so now I've gone ahead and just clipped all the edges because obviously whenever it's like a curve, it just doesn't lay right if it's not clipped. So clipped it all and I'm turning it inside out so that I can then go ahead and iron it so that it lays properly, but this is what it looks like. Obviously it's not properly ironed yet, so it's not gonna look like a perfect circle just yet, but I've got four of them made so far. I think I'm just gonna do like four at a time because I get so tired of just like too many repetitive things so i feel like i need to take a break in between so that's kind of what i am doing i also think i'm gonna do like four white maybe four like creamy off-white and then maybe four like pink and four green is what i'm thinking so we're gonna start with the four white that's kind of what we're going for i'm excited to start getting these 
it together and just to like start having actual inventory made and stuff made because i've just gotten so overwhelmed the past couple of days being like i don't have anything made i like won't launch for a couple more weeks like i don't know what i'm gonna be selling and like i don't know i just get very stressed about that sometimes and as much as i love being a made to order brand it's actually the most stressful thing ever to not have inventory at all times because i have so many people reaching out whether it's like photographers or whatever that are like hey can we shoot some of your pieces and i'm like i would love to collaborate and do those things but i just don't have inventory for you to like take and i don't have time to like make anything specifically for you so one of my goals this year is to just have a little bit more inventory like i still am gonna have things that are made to order but i also want to have inventory of stuff on hand just for those type of like occasions and things that randomly pop up or even like pop-ups like if i randomly get invited to a pop-up like next weekend like i can't just be like yeah because i don't have inventory so that's just one of my goals this year is to just have a little bit more inventory on hand to be able to say yes to those type of opportunities because i just feel like i'm missing a lot of opportunities by not having anything on hand so that's something i really want to work on this year so it feels good to like start seeing some products come to life feels good always feels good so yeah i'm going to continue doing this then we'll go ahead and iron them and then we'll get to the fun part which is just stuffing it and top stitching so i'm going to continue this <laughs> Okay, so now we have our pieces that look like this. You can tell now they're so much more flat and the seams are nicely pressed and everything. And we still have a little hole to put in all of the fabric scraps. So originally I said I was gonna like French seam top stitch basically, but I kind of spaced about the fact that I have this like open area that I can't really do that to because I need to stuff it. So we're actually gonna stuff it. And then when I sew the top stitching around it, I usually start by doing a top stitch on the seam and trying to move all the stuffing inward so that it doesn't actually catch it. So then that that way I do have like a flat seam to then connect it to the other side. So again, you'll see what I mean when I do it, but I'm going to take some of my fabric scraps from here and then I'm gonna kind of like shred them down a little bit because I think it looks best when it's like smaller shredded scraps rather than like big pieces. So I'll take like serger thread scraps like this are like perfect because they're just smaller and easier to kind of like maneuver. And I feel like it just looks better aesthetically like talking as well than having like big chunks kind of laying around so i kind of just go at it with my rotary cutter and literally just like go back and forth a bunch and make a bunch of little pieces which honestly you would think that this is like the easy part or whatever but this is such an arm workout by the end of it so you know be warned beware and i'm gonna continue doing this now Stuff so I can make one of these purses. I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch all around this. You guys will kind of see what I do, but there's no real method to it. I end up usually kind of just going into like a spiral and kind of doing circular shapes, but you know, every time it turns out a little different, which is kind of fun. So we'll see what I managed to do this time. Here's what it looks like. As you can see, I kind of just like to spread out all the stuffing as best as I can evenly all the way around so that the puffiness is like the same on all sides. But then here's where I have that quote unquote French seam where I just leave like a piece that doesn't have any stuffing in it all the way around so that I can then use that as the seam allowance to put it together to the other side. So that's what it looks like. Here's part one. I'm gonna do the other side and then we'll put it together and I'll kind of show you guys what that process looks like. So I have the other side made and I also put my tag on it. So here's what it looks like. And then together it'll look like this. And then you just sew. And then usually when I sew these, I'll keep it like clasped like that, just so I know that it's gonna line up and then I turn it inside out. And then I kind of line it up and then unclasp it 
and figure out where I want to do that whole seam allowance thing. But I forgot that I kind of need to make the little thingies on the side where the chains kind of hook in and I don't feel like doing that right now. So it's like 4.30ish. I might take a little break, check my email and do some computer work and then I might get back to this later tonight. But that's essentially like the biggest part of the process of just being zero waste is just like stuffing and top stitching. It really isn't that complicated. I feel like it's something I get asked about so much and it's like, I don't know, you can just look at it and see that I literally stuffed a couple layers of fabric with a bunch of little scraps and then just, you know, top stitch around it. And just like have fun and experiment with that type of like technique. It's nothing crazy, but like I said, I'm gonna take a break and I will be back.